All right, we are back. Coffee with Keener. We take a casual and conversational approach to studying God's Word. We are in series two, still in Philippians, episode two here. We're, we're, we're getting into chapter two, though, right, Dr. Keener? We're, we're yeah. moving. We're making progress. We're going to be in Philippians. You know, we, we picked a short book thinking, well, we don't want to spend too much yeah. time, but Man, here we are. We're going to be there for a while still. Yes, so. yes. And I hope you guys are following along with us. And yeah, we're taking our time, but there's a lot in here. So we're excited about that. But cool. So thanks for following us. We, uh, we started last week in series one. We talked a little bit about Paul and Paul started giving us some instructions and encouragement. And we heard from Governor Paul how to be good citizens of both the earthly kingdoms and the kingdom of God. We uh, heard from Coach Paul and gave us a strategy for victory. And we heard from General Paul, who let us know that the battle is going to be won. So Governor Paul, Coach Paul, and General <laughs> Paul, we heard from last week. That was pretty cool, Dr. Keener. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was cool. I, you know, I, I was trying to bring in a little bit of different spin on stuff. but uh, Yeah, man. Yeah. You got the, Covering you got all the, the bases. Yeah, you got the political, you got the athletic style, and then you got the military. So, yeah. I, and I, just a – Paul is so good at communicating, you know, using those different spectrums or perspectives, man. It's, it's just amazing how he communicated with his audience and who he was writing to. Yeah. So yeah. good. Yep. Cool. So we are moving into Chapter 2. Um, we're going to cover probably verses 1 through 4 today. So if you want to open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, we're going to start there. And we're talking about why we can and should be unified. And then we'll talk about a little bit of how we can do that. Um, so, yeah, Dr. Keener, you want to kick us off? Should I start reading or you got like a little bit of a intro here? Yeah, well, I mean, we could just start this whole thing off by giving a summary of, of kind of what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to learn that humility is mm. a big uh, part of uh, having unity. Okay. Uh, you know, it's kind of others first mindset. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and we're going to see that play out. Yeah. It's interesting. Paul uh, gives us four reasons why we should be unified. And then he, he jumps in and uh, gives us uh, four uh, ways how we can be unified. So, so that's kind of the, the overarching theme of this, this particular passage. So, uh, but yeah, cool. let's dig in, man. All right, man, let's do it. Should, what should I read? One and two? One and two, and then we'll, uh, we're going to break those down pretty mm-hmm. much, but we'll start by reading one and two. It, it's a complete sentence. I always hate the cutoff. Yeah. You know, like when there's two verses. It happens a lot, man. Yeah. So yeah. it's better just to read the whole thought, and then maybe we'll go back and and yeah. Look at it closer. Well, right. earlier, earlier when Paul was talking about rejoice, rejoice, I feel, I feel like it stops it right before like three words, <laughs> one verse. So, but yeah. all right, cool. So Philippians chapter two, verses one and two, I'm going to read. It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and of one mind. All right. All right. So that's a, there's a lot in there. <laughs> that's why we dig in brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's he, talking about being united in Christ. Yep. So, so Paul's going to give us here, uh, four reasons why we should be united. Why we should be encouraged and strive for this idea of being okay. one in spirit and purpose. Uh, so the first thing he talks about in this uh, verse one, he, he talks about being united with Christ. Because we mm. are united with Christ, we ought to be unified. Yeah. Uh, so this with Christ idea, it's like, it's like we've joined up with Jesus. No, yeah. we accept him as Savior Lord. We, we, we're, we're a member of his team now. Yeah. Team Jesus. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. If, if like, you and me are both united with Christ, what is that? An, it, you're a math guy. 
what is that, the similarity rule? If we're both united with him, then we should be united together. Like if yeah, people, yeah. It's, it's a logic thing, too. Yeah. That, you know, if this is true and this is true, then this is true. So, yeah. so if we, you're with Christ and I'm with Christ, we ought to be with each other. Yes, yes. You know, and, and that's what this whole thing is all about. You know, the work of Jesus isn't just the work of one or two gifted people, preachers, whatever. It's the work of the whole body of Christ. Yeah. And, and Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 12, where he, he actually compares the body of Christ, you know, with the human body. Mm, yeah. So, so when does the human body work best? When everything is working together. Every single part of it is working together in yeah. harmony. Yeah. And the same thing is true with the body of Christ, which is another phrase followers of jesus yeah you know the work of christ uh works best when individual members of the body of christ are working together so so yeah. that's basically that makes sense man because like oh. i love sports and, and i'm a tall guy and sometimes my legs don't know what my arms are doing and i get a little bit all over the place and it doesn't work out well but when everything yeah. is like working together that that's when you're the most efficient okay so that's with Christ, we're with Christ. That's why all right. we should be unified. Reason number one. All right. Reason yeah. number two. Yeah. The next thing he talks about in verse one, he talks about being comforted because we are being comforted uh, by Christ's love. Mm. And, and man, what a joy it is to know that, that we yeah. as followers of Jesus are loved by Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, that should bring gladness and joy. <laughs> to all of our hearts. Yeah. Now, it is true that Jesus loves everybody. Mm. Okay, we need to understand that. Yeah. But here's what, I, what I've come to and the conclusion I've come to. Even though Jesus loves everybody, I am of the opinion that only followers of Jesus can truly experience mm. and comprehend his love. Okay. You know, in fact, in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 18 and 19, Paul talks about this. Do uh, you have that and you want yeah. to get that for us? Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. Okay, it says, um, Establish in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you yeah. may be filled. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Paul is praying here that that we as followers of Jesus would grasp and know, yeah, the wide and long and high and deep love of yeah. Jesus. I like how he he like covers all the bases there. Yeah. That yeah. It's everywhere. wide. It's long. It's high. Yeah. And it's deep. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like once once you grasp that understanding and, and you, and as you continue on life and start understanding that more and more, then yeah, you can't experience it. You know, you need to know it to, to be able to experience it. So that makes sense. I, I get that. Yeah. And I think when you ultimately grasp that, it compels you, man, man, when you get the love of Jesus, I think it compels you to love other people. Definitely. And when you love other people, uh, what happens? And they love you back. There is unity. 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 Love so, produces uh, unity. Clearly, love will produce yep. unity. Yeah, so, that's awesome. All right, so that's reason number two. Reason number three. We uh, should be unified because we are experiencing uh, what Paul calls in verse one, the fellowship uh, with the Holy Spirit. Okay. And here Paul is essentially talking about, you know, our relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Mm. Now, the, the biblical truth is the Holy Spirit indwells every follower of Jesus. And that happens at the moment you accept Christ as Savior and Lord. Yeah. So he indwells you. He, he actually fills you at the moment of conversion. Uh, he baptizes you. He immerses you. Yeah. So it's like. Uh, those are some of the words that are used to describe that initial fullness of the Spirit. Okay. Uh, 
Paul does tell us in Ephesians chapter 5, 18, and he exhorts us to be filled with the Spirit. And we could add the word continuously. Okay. Because that Greek word that means filled with is the Greek word pleruste. Ooh, pleruste. Pleruste. Ah, and, nice. uh, and it means, it's in the present tense in the Greek text, which means uh, continuous action. So, so it's not we, something that, that happened and it's over. It's no. continuously happening as we move through life. Yes. So, so how do you get filled with the Spirit? Well, you get filled with the Spirit by allowing the Holy Spirit to influence your life. Hmm. It's interesting, earlier in Ephesians 5.18, Paul says, don't get drunk on wine, but instead be filled with the Spirit. Mm. So, so it's a kind of an interesting comparison, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's very you know, real. Because yeah. you know, someone who is drunk on wine is under the influence of alcohol. Yeah. Someone who is it's filled gonna, with the Spirit. Yeah. They're both good. It's going to affect what you do, what you say, yeah. how you yeah. act. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so the person who is filled with the Spirit um, is, is allowing the Holy Spirit uh, to influence or impact their life. Yeah. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen all the time. You know, that's the ideal. But it's what we must strive for. You know, there's a lot of ideals in the Bible. Yeah. And... Unfortunately, because of who we are, you know, we don't always live up to those ideals. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we should constantly strive, you know, to do that. For that. That so, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so let's get back to this, uh, this word of uh, fellowship or companionship. Uh, koinonia yeah. is the Greek word. Koinonia. koinonia. And it actually means partnership. Okay. And it's interesting, the word was used to refer to a group of people who shared a common interest and worked together for a common cause. Unit. So what Paul's saying here is that, mm. you know, we have this fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, we're in partnership with the Holy Spirit yeah. when it comes to the work of the Lord. And... and if we're partners again, it goes back to this team yeah, concept. Absolutely. We're a team. We're partners together. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself says, you know, we need to work together because we are in partnership with the Spirit of God. Wow. So love produces unity. Yeah. And being in partnership with the Holy Spirit produces unity. Should produce unity as well. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So that's three reasons. So fourth, fourth reason why we should and can be united. Yeah, Paul gives us a fourth reason in, in verse one. Uh, he talks about tenderness and compassion. Yeah, yep. Uh, so kind of backing up to being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If you are under the Spirit's influence, uh, certain qualities, godly characteristics will be evident in your life. Mm. Uh, the Bible calls this good fruit. Yeah, fruit. Will show yeah. up on your tree. <laughs> that, yeah. That's kind of the picture. Yep, uh, absolutely. And, and Paul gives us a, a pretty good list of some of this godly fruit in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 and 23. Yeah, we uh, talked about those, yeah. Yeah, we talked about that in another episode. And again, this fruit that shows up on our tree, if you will, yeah. uh, is actually what the Holy Spirit produces in our lives mm. if we allow Him to influence our life. Yep, so this is the, that, that, the, the qualities, godly yes. qualities, that if the Spirit is dwelling and influencing us, and people. we're listening to them, yes. Yeah, and we're following that, then externally people will see that. Yeah, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Boom. Good list. Good list. Now, I don't think that's exhaustive. I, I think there's more yeah. fruit. You know, certainly the Holy Spirit can and does produce other 
kinds yeah. of fruit like like this tenderness tenderness and compassion yeah. and there's no doubt in my mind that tenderness and compassion will produce unity here's yeah. why the person who is tender is sensitive to the feelings and needs of others mm. that's the first thing and the person who is compassionate has a heart that feels a heart that can feel the, the pain and sorrow of others a heart that feels but it doesn't stop there that person who is compassionate also has hands that mm -hmm. act yeah that's huge they see it and then they do something about it as well absolutely that's and huge. when followers of jesus are truly concerned about each other and, and demonstrate tenderness and compassion don't you think there will be unity <laughs> in that group of believers yeah, no absolutely. question about it amen awesome man. that's so cool so four reasons we're, we're with we're united with christ we're loved by christ we're in fellowship with the spirit and we're called to be tender you know tenderness and compassionate so awesome those those things definitely unify mm -hmm. cool so that's the why so then how can we do that you know how how can we should we be unified like you know you know how can we do that like applicable you know yeah and before paul jumps in that he sneaks in uh, something personal here oh, does he yeah uh he tells his readers in, in verse two um at the beginning well yeah the whole thing there verses one and two he basically says this if i know that you are working together yeah the cross for the cause of christ you know and you're doing the things that i have been talking about yeah he said man that's gonna make my joy complete nice yeah threw that in there i love that yeah throw that in there he, every once in a while he gets a little personal and he, yeah. he lets you know his heart and that's that's why i like paul man yeah you know, like here's four afraid. reasons here's four reasons why you should do it and it's gonna make me really happy too. Yeah, it's gonna make me happy. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, and it's yeah. all about joy. And, yeah. and as we point out in the past episode, joy That's is huge. based on what's going on inside you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and these are the and, kind of things that will bring joy to Paul. And this is the fourth time actually he expresses his joy. Oh yeah. And this joy thing, this theme is like running throughout the book. Nothing would bring Paul more joy than knowing that his friends at Philippi were standing firm in one spirit and contending as one for the faith. Yeah. And I'll tell you, there's nothing that makes a local pastor more joyful than, than having a church that is doing the same thing. I, I can, man, after, after 40 years of, yeah. of, as a pastor, I, I, uh, I can identify years. with Paul Ooh. saying, Whew, I, that's the one thing I want, man. I want my, this church, yeah. this local body of believers to, to just work together for the honor and glory of God. Yeah, that's so. Cool. What joy, man! That's cool. It's cool. There's to an Paul. interesting cool verse in. Do that. Yeah, there's an interesting verse in uh, Psalm 133, one. I love this verse. Uh, Psalm of David, just the first part there. Okay, verse one. Yeah, just that first sentence. How good and pleasant. It is when God's people live together in unity. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> what we're talking is, about. Man. How good and pleasant. So, so where there is unity, there is joy. Yeah. And where there is unity, there is effective ministry. That's so cool. Yeah. Such a big part. Yeah. So that was Paul's, just, he, he had to sneak that in there. That is. He... And, and it'd make me happy if you guys do this. Make me feel good. Well, yeah. really... It makes him happy and joyful because, I mean, his mission is that. So, if other, like you said, if other people are helping that, completing that work like he's doing, of course it's going to make him joyful. And it's so. going to bring joy to the people who are working together yeah. as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Enough joy to go around. Enough joy. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so how can we be unified? Let's move on to that. I know that in the verse 2 it starts talking about that. Yeah, let's read verses two, three, and four, and then we'll okay. kind of dig in. All right. So Philippians chapter two, verses two to four, it says, Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, 
being one in spirit and one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each other, each of you to the interests of the others. Ah, uh, there it is, man, that others wow. first. Others first, man. Mentality, mindset, attitude. So four reasons here. Uh, he starts out in verse two. If you yep. really want to make unity a reality in the lo local church, the people in that local church need to be like-minded. Okay. Like-minded. Uh, need to have the same mindset or attitude. And what mindset or attitude is that? Jesus. Jesus, man. Paul actually answers that for us in verse 5. We're just going to jump ahead to the next section just for this verse. Yeah. Uh, what does he say in Philippians 2 verse 5? In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. As Christ Jesus. And, and next week, we're going to really uh, into that. talk more about that mindset and what it is. But for now, we just need to say that, you know, if we want to have unity in the local church, we got to think like Jesus. Yeah. And ultimately act like Jesus. Yeah. It's going to bring unity and it's also going to show people a around maybe who don't believe in christ like what yeah. that mindset's all about it's huge yeah so here once again man we harp on this all the time but you know it, it comes down to knowing knowing the word of god what does god really want from us you're never going to develop a jesus mindset if Without, you don't know the word yeah yeah because that's where where it tells you what yeah. jesus is like you know his life is recorded yeah, we're going to harp on it. We're probably going to continue to talk about it all the time. Because, and I mean, I think it's evident that we're doing a Bible study to, to back that up. But yeah, <laughs> knowing, knowing who he is and how he acted and his attitude is, is crucial. And that's found in the word. So cool. So be like-minded. Okay. Next reason. Then he moves on and he, he talks about love. Yep. In verse 2, he tells us to have the same love. Mm. So have the same mindset, the mindset of Jesus. Yeah. Have the same love. What do you, Jesus? What do you think kind of love? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm doing great, man. You're doing great. <laughs> doing good. The love of Jesus, man. That's yeah. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And Jesus made this so clear uh, in John 13, 34. Okay. He says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Yeah. So he was the example. Perfect you know. example, yeah. You know, it wasn't just, hey, you got to love people. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, look at my life, how I interact. That's how you do it, love. Do it just like I did. Yeah. Now, we don't have Jesus walking with us like the first disciples yeah. did, but we have his life. Yeah. Uh, recorded for us just not his entire life but a good portion yeah uh, so we just got to learn the word how how did jesus love people mm -hmm. and, I, and i've over the years as i've talked about this i've used three words to describe christ's love there's probably others we could use but i like these three uh, the first one is l love people unselfishly mm -hmm. you know when you're selfish you're always looking to get something back for what you do, right? For me. Yeah, that, and we do that. You know, we all are guilty of that at one time or another. Let's be honest with each other. But, uh, but Jesus loves unselfish, unselfishly. Yeah. He doesn't ever expect to get anything back. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to love like that. Uh, yeah. Unconditional is another word that I like to use. Uh, no matter what, man, I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care who the people are. You love unconditionally. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. And then finally, sacrificial. I like to use that word because sometimes when you love people the way you should, it means you, you might have to give something up. Yeah. 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 You might lose something in you the might process. Lose something. And it's not just, I don't care if I'm getting your back. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you yeah. may even. You're gonna, yeah. You give lose. something, give something up, and not get that replaced with anything. Yeah, so it's like, uh, 
that's the way we need to love, man. It, it's tough. Don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. It, and that's why it's always being focused on Jesus. You know, we got to yeah. look at him, uh, allow the spirit to influence our lives and then do what we know we should do. I mean, that's, yeah. that's great. Love, I think, is is a virtue and a true mark of Christian maturity. Mm. Yeah. It includes a lot of stuff. I, I like uh, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. That's like the love chapter we talked oh, that's about. The, that's the marriage one. Love in one of the former episodes. Yeah. This is the love chapter. We, we you know, mm-hmm. people like to have this read at their weddings. Yeah. I, I think almost every wedding I've ever done, you know, yeah. read 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. You know? Uh, and love if we look that. at that, is that? Yep. yeah, it includes things such as patience, kindness, concern, mm. humility, gentleness, yeah. objectivity, fairness, honesty, and sincerity. And I mm. like how Paul sums it up in 1 Corinthians 13, 7. He says, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres mm. Woo. That's, good. So, that's real good that's the kind of love that we're called to do persevere. man that, that's uh have love. the same love i love the persevere man because it's like no matter what like love always breaks through yep nice cool so be like-minded love and then as we move along i see being one in the spirit again we kind of talked about that already right yeah one in spirit and purpose and, and you know i think if you have a jesus mindset and you love like jesus this one just falls into place yeah. you know you get two first two things right the third yeah, one kind of yeah 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 just cool. happened so and we've talked about this and you know we don't need to really say much cool. more uh, so yeah. let's move on to the to the fourth step okay what's uh, that in, in verses three and four here Paul gives us a four step to make unity a reality in a local church. And, and I, I sum it up this way. He tells us we need to be unselfish and humble, mm. unselfish and humble. Uh, yeah. Not looking to your own interests, but to each other's. Yeah. Uh, let me just do something here. This is huge, and this is probably the the hardest one. This unselfish. You guys, if you watched my story, I, I talked about you know my selfish nature, but unselfish and humble. Others' first attitude is is uh, something you know I personally need to work on all day long, and I'm sure there's other people out there. I'm hoping. Well, I'm not hoping, but you know what I mean. Well, hey, we all got a little bit of that, man. It it just it's happens. Fair. Yeah, uh, we we. We still hang on to that uh, sinful nature, and oh. every now and then it emerges oh. its ugly head. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, okay, let's dig in here a little bit. It says, "Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility uh, consider others better than yourselves. Uh, look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others." So mm. this is this others mindset that Paul is talking about. Uh, don't yeah. be selfish or vain. In other words. Mm-hmm. Instead, be humble and consider others better than yourself. Now, we got to be careful here because we don't want to get the wrong attitude, the wrong uh, impression here. Yeah. Uh, let's talk first about what Paul isn't saying. Okay. Uh, he's not saying that we shouldn't have good, godly self esteem. Mm. I That's think we big. should. Have good yeah. godly self-esteem, yeah. especially as followers of Jesus. Yeah, we got to take yeah. care of ourselves. Yeah, I mean we're we're children of God, man. It, it's like yeah. uh, if that doesn't give us good self-esteem, I don't know what what can. So we need to take yeah. care of ourselves. We need to think yeah. about ourselves. We need to take care of ourselves. Uh, but you know, we should never. Paul says this in Romans 12, 3. Don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought. Mm. And here's why. I think when we think too much of ourselves, 
we tend to think too little of others. Absolutely. We get, we get, again. we get bigger, they get smaller. Yeah. We think too much of ourselves and then we think too little of others. Mm. Yeah. So let, let's talk about something that I just want to touch on this. I don't want to dwell on this because it's a, it's a, it's a hot button right now, big topic. And that, that's the, this whole idea of, of racism. All right. Yeah, huge right now. Yep. It, it's been huge for a long time. A long time. So why does racism exist? Yeah. Here's what, here's what I think. I think racism exists, and, and it, it goes right into what Paul is saying here in Romans 12, 3. Don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought. Yeah. I think racism exists because certain people think they're better than other people. Hmm. And when I use the word better, I, I'm, I'm using it in the sense of certain people think they're more important, more valuable, yeah. and more privileged. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you have this attitude that you're better than other people, you're superior, these other people are nothing, you know, I think ultimately that attitude leads to hatred. Yeah. Not good fruit. No, this is bad fruit, man. Bad fruit. It is not the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. No way, no shape, no form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me just be as clear as I can be on the subject of racism. Racism of any kind toward any kind of people mm -hmm. is a sin. Absolutely. It's a sin. And there is absolutely no place Mm -hmm. racism of any kind in the body of Jesus Christ, period. Yeah. It's period. All, it's all over scripture, all over scripture. Let me just give you a couple. Yeah. First uh, John four twenty, for example. Yeah. Says if you claim to love God at the same, same time, hate people of any kind, you're an outright liar. Yeah. I mean, that's Woo. clear. <laughs> that's clear. Don't send in any emails, people. I mean, I didn't write the book. I'm just the yeah. messenger. I mean, yeah. this is clear. Uh, Matthew 22, 39, the, you know, the great commandment. Jesus says, love God, love your neighbor. Yeah. Who's your neighbor? Anybody Everybody. God puts in your path. Yep. And back to that verse, those verses we talked about in John chapter 13, verse 35 all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another mm. so love not hate is the mark of a true follower of jesus yeah so bottom line don't ever think you're better than anybody else because you're not yeah. you know? uh always think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the truth of the word of God. Yeah. Wow. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All right, one more verse to go. One uh, more verse. Yep. Uh, this will kind of sum it up here. Verse four. Yeah. Uh, it says, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So it's, again, it's good to... Yeah. Think about yourself, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But as you do that, always be considerate of others. Always. Because yeah. it's not just about you and you and me, you know? It's about yeah. other people as well. So we always got to be thinking about how, you know, our words and actions are going to impact other people, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ, man. Yeah. I mean, this applies to everybody. Yeah, neighbors. Especially yeah. so when we're talking about, because Jesus said somewhere that the, if you treat brothers and sisters in a certain way, it's like you're treating me this way. Mm. Ooh, I wish I would have wrote, I don't know the exact reference, but I know yeah. he said that somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, it, Paul puts some interesting stuff out uh mm -hmm. 
in this, uh, on this topic, one of the first things that comes to mind is, is 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Okay. You want to read that? 1 Corinthians yeah. 6, 12. It says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I yeah, have the... Okay. Okay, let's stop there. Yeah. Now, when he says I have the right to do anything, he's talking about things that, that aren't specifically defined as sinful in the Bible. Yeah. So I said, hey, there's things I have the right to do. And I'd like to do. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to do. Yeah. But he says, there are times when I won't do them for the yeah. sake of somebody else. Yeah. Wow. That's big. That's so we have this awesome freedom as Christians. You know, the mm -hmm. Lord has set us free. Hallelujah. You know? But yeah. there are times when we got to think about other people. Yeah. It's not about what makes me happy, yeah. what's good for me. Even if, yeah, even if you could do it yeah. biblically, it's about how are others viewing that? How are others seeing that? How does that, how, 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 how do they come into the equation? Yeah. Which is huge. And that's, that's that's real big. So will my actions or words benefit the body of Christ? Yeah, you know, the the local church that I'm in. Picture, yeah, yeah. That that's what we have to ask before we exercise our freedom. We got to have yeah. that that freedom filter in our brain, man. Yeah. It's like uh, that's so not cool. always good to do things you can do. Yeah, uh, and, and that's what Paul's saying here. And he takes this even further. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 9.22, where he says, I have become all things to all men, mm. so that by all possible means, I might save some. Yeah. So again, others first, man. That's what Paul is saying here. And really, Paul was willing to do anything short of sin. To get people. To help somebody to find Jesus. Yeah. And that's he wild. went out of his comfort zone. Yep. To do that, we need to get out of our comfort zone and do the same thing, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes we put our own interests aside, you know, so that we might help somebody find Jesus. So, so mm -hmm. two great examples here from Paul yeah. about this, uh, this whole idea. So, uh, yeah, awesome. be like-minded, you know, have the same love, be one in spirit and purpose, and be unselfish and humble. Have this others first mentality yeah uh, others first that's awesome yeah so oh, man bringing it that's what we got to work for man because unity god wants it first and foremost yeah and the other good reason is that unity will result in awesome ministry yeah so that's it man cool man so good let's uh check out the deep question of the week Todd Williams, New Tripoli, Pennsylvania. He says, where are Elijah and Enoch? Do they still have their physical bodies? So I think this is in reference to our Globo stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, we were talking about the Globo, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think that really got people's attention. People are curious about that. So where are Elijah and Enoch? And do they still have their physical bodies? Okay. And just background, like they were taking up, they never physically died so that's yeah i'll, I'll yep. okay all right take a second <clears throat> you ready to rock and roll i think so i think so ready go all right as you mentioned both enoch and elijah were taken into heaven by god uh before they could experience physical death the only two people that we know of uh, so I think it's safe to assume that they are still with God in heaven. And I don't believe they're in a physical body. Uh, I believe that they have been in glorified bodies, globos, ever since they were taken into heaven. Boom. They're in the globos. That's right. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, All right. Yeah. Perfect. The Globo. We're never going to get away from the Globo. Got to keep thinking. Hey, Globo's man, coming. Didn't you say that last episode? What's that? 
When, when you kind of get yourself in a funk, you say, man, ah. but the Globo is coming. The Globo is coming. The Globo is coming. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Hey, well, you, I'm afraid that you have some sort of uh, story to tell me or. or I do. Uh, I just wanted you to know that uh, the other day I, I shot my first turkey. What? I, I don't even know you hunted. Yeah, yeah, I think they know, yeah, it's uh, just... Dabbling? Yeah, yeah, I shot my first turkey. Yeah. Uh, wow, man, congrats. Yeah, scared the living daylights out of the people in the frozen food section. Derek, Dr. Keener going hunting at Weiss. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, my goodness. Hey, guys, thank you so much for uh, tagging along today, talking about others first this is huge and, and next week tune in man we're going to talk about that perfect example for what that looks like and that is jesus amen, amen. thanks for tuning in coffee with keener we will see you next week and uh peace out guys grace and peace all right bye-bye boom